This, of course, is Black History Month, and tonight News 13 takes you to Atlantic Beach. It was established in the 1930s as an oceanfront community for blacks who were denied access to beaches during the Jim Crow era. News 13's Annette Pegler joins us now in the studio to share its rich history and how it's remaining relevant today. Annette. Bob Megan nicknamed the Black Pearl during the 1930s to the 1970s, Atlantic Beach was a mecca for black people and one of the most popular beach resorts for minorities from Virginia all the way to Florida. Despite devastating hurricanes, the town is progressing and community leaders are making sure its history is preserved. It's really, it was a thriving, thriving community. Former mayor of Atlantic Beach, Irene Evans Armstrong, grew up in the town she held office in, which was 96 acres in size. This being my home, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. It comes from humble beginnings. A black man from North Carolina, George Tyson, acquired Atlantic Beach land in the 1930s from previous owners, the Spiveys, a white family that would bring their maids and butlers to the remote wooded beachfront on their days off. A tent pitched for maids and butlers that were cleaning house and homes to in Myrtle Beach and around. It was the only place where slaves on the South Carolina coast could vacation. If African Americans could not vacation and visit other beach fronts in the state of South Carolina and Georgia and, and Florida, even Virginia, you can imagine what it looked like in Atlantic Beach. Eventually, Tyson would run into financial problems and had to mortgage both Pearl Beach and Atlantic Beach sections. Armstrong says the Atlantic Beach Company was then formed, which consisted of 10 black shareholders to save the land. They all sold off to like-minded individuals who were doctors, lawyers, and educators. The second and third generations of those families are the current owners of properties in Atlantic Beach. The father of former councilman John Skeeters owned property here more than 50 years ago. We used to travel from Wilmington, North Carolina to Atlantic Beach during the summer to operate Skeeter's Place. The business served as a restaurant and a hotel. We put money back into ourselves there. And I can remember the time when Atlantic Beach was just one big family of investors that came here. The family atmosphere transcended the town. We had Ferris wheels. We had several amusement. It was hotels. In fact, a hotel was here, a three, sto three four story hotel here, a gardens hotel. Black folks also enjoyed great food and live music. But in 1954, Hurricane Hazel would change that. Hurricane Hazel wiped out the hotel that we had. And then Hurricane Hugo in the 80s. But it wouldn't have been so bad had the business owners been able to get insurance. After Hazel, white insurance companies would not insure black owners and businesses and banks would not give them loans to rebuild. Present day, Atlantic Beach still struggles economically, but has managed to stay afloat. It's thriving through events like the Gullah Geechee Festival and the Atlantic Beach Bike Fest, partly started by Skeeters and Armstrong. We started inviting other motorcycle group, groups to come to Atlantic Beach to celebrate Memorial Day weekend with us. Atlantic Beach is, it just has a, a resiliency that is like no other. In 1966, Atlantic Beach applied and was granted a municipal charter from the state of South Carolina, making it an independent town, electing its own black government into office. Armstrong says it remains the only black-owned oceanfront charter town in the country. Back to you.